DSEI is one of the major events in the defence calendar. It brings together all elements of land, sea and air. This year, the land systems is probably the most important, as it brings together the user, the army, and the prime contractors, and also the many subcontractors that make up the supply chain. This year, a number of new vehicles are being shown for the first time, not only within developed in the United Kingdom, but also developed worldwide. Attendees this year will see the first example of the uh, Scout, which has been named Ajax, that has been shown on the General Dynamics stand. On the Lockheed Martin stand, we have the latest Warrior Capability Sustainment Program, and being unveiled later today from Singapore is the Terex 2 Amphibious APC. Also, countries like Turkey have bought their armour, Spain has bought their self-propelled mortar system, so it really is an international exhibition that brings together the user and industry from all over the world to talk about what's happening, technology insertions, um, new user requirements, and the exhibition is backed up by a number of excellent briefings from the various elements of the armed forces saying what they want to do in the future and how industry can help them do that. A typical international contract of the show is a Vico Defence Vehicles. They are very much into international cooperation. This is the latest LMV, which over 4,000 have been built and is in service of the British Army as the Panther. If then we swing round to the right hand side, this vehicle has been developed by Vico in close cooperation with the Brazilian Army and is now in production. The Brazilian Army has ordered over 2,000 of these and the first export customer is the Lebanon and they're taking delivery of a soon back. So the vehicle market, particularly world, is international. It goes across borders and companies have to develop vehicles to meet specific requirements. For example, the Panzer, Prime contract with BA Systems and Avico and BA Systems work together to customise that vehicle to meet the requirements of the British Army. So it's got a remote weapon station, special communications and many other things. You see the different flags, all of those vehicles are probably customised to meet individual customers' requirements, especially compared with weapon systems and communication systems. This exhibition is not only about armoured fighting vehicles, it's also about the host of key support vehicles, which range from trucks, lightweight vehicles, to equipment such as this very heavily modified JCB. These fulfil a vital role in the Army in actually carrying out excavations, and this particular one is in service with a number of armies, including the British Army and the US Army. As you can see, it is basically for JCB, which can be fitted with various attachments. And what makes it interesting, it's got a protected armoured cab, which is fitted with bulletproof glass and an air conditioning system. It can also be fitted with different attachments. And on this particular one, some of the normal bar armour has been removed and replaced by aim safe power and armour. The advantages of that, it saves about 400 kilograms in weight. So you can either add some extra armour somewhere else or put other equipment on. So that provides an increased level of protection against rocket propelled grenades. This particular vehicle can be used as a standalone system or integrated with other systems. For example, the British Army used it as a part of the Talisman route clearing system, which is a whole family of vehicles designed to go ahead and clear the route of mines and IEDs. A large number have been built for the US Army as a high mobility engineering excavator, and that is used by the combat engineers for a variety of roles in the forward battlefield area. That's why it's got protection and an air-conditioned cab. In many parts of the world, there's a requirement for special operations type vehicle, which have high mobility and have good terrain crossing capability. This particular one has been developed by Jankel and is the latest in the Fox series of vehicles, in which well over 500 have been built for the international marketplace. This is typical of how you take a commercial vehicle, this is a Toyota Land Cruiser, and optimize it to meet the customer's end requirements. For example, you've got winch at the front, smoke grenades, special doors, and on the top a roof-mounted 7.62 machine gun. This type of vehicle, every particular customer wants something different. So you can have it with a petrol engine, a diesel engine, manual transmitting, automatic. So you customize it to meet the end user specific requirements. There's been a growing trend for industry to invest in their own products. This particular one is the M777-155 artillery system, and that was developed as a private venture by the then vessel Spicker Shipwing Engineering. It's been a major success, and over 1,000 have been built, and is in service of the US Army, Marine Corps, 
Australia and Canada and is expected soon to be ordered by India. It was developed as a private venture for the export market. So summing up, DSCI brings together not only land, sea and air, the users, the Army, Navy and Air Force, but also the contractors and the thousands of small and medium contractors which support the primes. Also this year, there's a lot of stuff happening on supporting the civil community. Ebola rate bricks, humanitarian lift, where aircraft and helicopters can rapidly help stricken areas, whether it's an earthquake or a hurricane. So it covers the broad spectrum from complete combat operations right through to humanitarian support.